ओके okay गाइस तो इस वीडियो में हम बात करेंगे गैस पेपर सीरीज मीन्स ऐसे कुछ ऐसे क्वेश्चंस जिनके एग्जाम में आने के चांस क्वेश्चन तो नहीं आते एग्जैक्टली exactly, लेकिन टॉपिक्स वही रहते हैं तो यहाँ पर हम 20-25 वो इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स को फोकस करेंगे जो पेपर में जनरली आते आते हैं तो मैंने लाइक इन क्वेश्चन को सिलेक्ट किया था पिछले पाँच साल का पेपर देख और पिछले एक साल का इंडिया में जितने भी एग्जाम है उनका पेपर देख के जो क्वेश्चन सिमिलर टॉपिक होते हैं उसको डिस्कस करते हैं सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग मच ऑफ योर टाइम देखो अनिमिया से एक क्वेश्चन पेपर में आता है तो हम इसको पढ़ते हैं थर्टी ईयर ओल्ड फीमेल तीस साल की फीमेल है फर्स्ट थिंड इन द एम सी क्यू इज ऑलवेज एज फीमेल है ऑन स्ट्रिक्ट वेजिटेरियन डाइट अब ये एक ईजी uh, क्वेश्चन है जो कई लोगों को आंसर पता है लेकिन uh, कुछ बच्चों से ईजी में गलती हो जाती है एग्जाम के प्रेशर में तो प्रेजेंटेड फटीक पैलर हीमोग्लोबिन नौ है एम सी वी वन हंड्रेड टेन सो क्लियर कट आप देख सकते हो इट्स अ केस ऑफ माइक्रोसाइटिक अनिमिया तो ये पेशेंट को क्या है माइक्रोसाइटिक अनिमिया सो इट्स अ केस ऑफ माइक्रोसाइटिक अनिमिया माइक्रोसाइटिक और आई कैन यूज द टर्म मेगालोब्लास्टिक मेगालोब्लास्टिक अनिमिया है तो जनरली आई कैन से वेजिटेरियन डाइट दिया हुआ तो मोर लाइकली चांस इट इज अ बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशिएंसी तो ये बी ट्वेल्व की डेफिशिएंसी है तो आयन डेफिशिएंसी माइक्रोसाइटिक होता है सिड्रोब्लास्टिक माइक्रोसाइटिक होता है सिकल सन अनिमिया नॉर्मोसाइटिक होता है तो आंसर विल बिकम बी तो ऐसे ही आपको एक क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में मिलेगा तो उसको कैसे सॉल्व करना है एक बार उसको देखते हैं तो सबसे पहले आपको देखना है अनिमिया के क्वेश्चन में हीमोग्लोबिन ऑफकोर्स कम दिया होगा सो हम ये मानते हैं कि क्लिनिकल केस होगा हीमोग्लोबिन विल बी गिवन एस लो तो उसके बाद जो आपको अगला पैरामीटर चेक करना है दैट इज एम सी वी तो एम सी वी की नॉर्मल वैल्यू जो होती है दैट इज एटी टू हंड्रेड फेंटो लीटर अब इस एम सी वी के बिहाव पे वी कैन डिवाइड अनिमिया सो अगर एम सी वी की वैल्यू एट्टी से कम है इसको हम बोलेंगे माइक्रोसाइटिक अगर एट्टी टू हंड्रेड के बीच में नॉर्मोसाइटिक और मोर देन हंड्रेड माइक्रोसाइटिक सो so जस्ट याद रखिए कि माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक अनिमिया मीन दिस व्हेन एम सी वैल्यू इज लेस एटी तो इसको हम बोलते हैं माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक ये हो गया नॉर्मोसाइटिक नॉर्मोक्रोमिक एंड दिस इज माइक्रोसाइटिक सो ये uh, uh, मैं आपको बार बार बोल रहा हूँ बिकॉज यहाँ से क्वेश्चन आता ही आता है तो इफ यू सी माइक्रोसाइटिक मीन्स यहाँ पर आपको याद रखना है बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशेंसी फॉलेट डेफिशेंसी तो बी ट्वेल्व डेफिशेंसी का अगर क्वेश्चन होगा तो आप देखोगे कि वहाँ पर वेजिटेरियन डाइट लिखा होगा फॉलेट में जनरली प्रेगनेंसी की हिस्ट्री होगी या फिर कोई ड्रग्स जैसे कि मीट और ट्रैक्साइड पर नहीं अगर नॉर्मोसाइटिक की बात करूँ तो जितने भी हीमोलाइटिक अनिमे हैं जहाँ पर हीमोलाइसिस होता है वो नॉर्मोसाइटिक में आएंगे दूसरा आपको याद रखना है सी के डी का अनिमिया जो होता है और ए प्लास्टिक अनिमिया सी के डी का अनिमिया और ए प्लास्टिक अनिमिया ये सब किसमें आएंगे नॉर्मोसाइटिक में अब इन दोनों की बात करूँ तो यहाँ पर देखो बॉडी में आर प्रोड्यूस नहीं हो रही तो इन दोनों के अंदर रेटिकुलोसाइट काउंट भी कम रहेगा हीमोलाइसिस में आर की डेथ हो रही है तो जब बेबी आर बी सी होंगी बढ़ेंगी तो रेडिकोसाइड का बढ़ा हुआ आएगा माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक आपको याद रखना है विद निमोनिक शीतल शीतल का मतलब होता है एस एस सिड्रोब्लास्टिक तो एस विल बी सिड्रोब्लास्टिक आई एस आई डी ए आयन डिफिशेंसी टी एस थलेसीमिया ए इस ए ओ सी डी एल इस लेड पॉइजनिंग और लेड पॉइजनिंग बेसिकली कुछ अलग से नहीं है लेड पॉइजनिंग इज अ टाइप ऑफ सिड्रोब्लास्टिक अनिमिया जस्ट मैं दो चीज़ों पे यहाँ पे हाईलाइट करूँगा कि थलेसीमिया थलेसीमिया इन लेटर स्टेजेस थलेसीमिया में आगे जाके कई बार ज़्यादा हीमोलाइस होना चालू हो जाता है देन थलेसीमिया कैन बिकम नॉर्मोसाइटिक सिमिलरली अनिमिया ऑफ क्रोने डिसीज ये भी लेटर स्टेज में जाके किस में कन्वर्ट हो जाएगा नॉर्मोसाइटिक नॉर्मोक्रोमिक में तो यहाँ से मैं एक्सपेक्ट कर रहा हूँ एक क्वेश्चन एग्जाम में सो दिस इज लाइक माय लिस्ट ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेड क्वेश्चन नंबर वन आगे चलते हैं यहाँ से आपको सॉल्व करना है क्वेश्चन इस तरीके से कमिंग टू क्वेश्चन नंबर टू आ थर्टीन ईयर ओल्ड पेशेंट अगेन पहली हिंट आपको देखो बड़े क्वेश्चन होते हैं मेडिसिन के क्लिनिकल केस होते हैं तो आपको बार बार पढ़ोगे टाइम नहीं मिलेगा स्मोक यूरिन स्मोक यूरिन से अगर आपको कुछ समझ में ना तो यहाँ देखो डिसमोर्फिक आर बी का शेप अलग अलग आ रहा है मोर देन ट्वेंटी हाई पावर फील्ड डब्ल्यू बी सी भी हैं दो से चार अब देखो डब्ल्यू बी सी सिर्फ दो से चार है तो ये सिग्निफिकेंट नहीं है 
फिर अगर आप देखोगे यहाँ पर क्वेश्चन में स्मोक की यूरिन आ रहा है आरबीसी टूट रही है इसका मतलब पेशेंट को हेमाचूरिया तो हो रहा है हेमाचूरिया तो हो रहा है हेमाचूरिया का अगर मैं आपको बात करूँ मोस्ट कॉमन कोर्स तो वो होता है आपका स्टोन अब यहाँ पर ब्लैडर कैलकुलर में स्टोन दिया हुआ है ब्लैडर में स्टोन है तो ऐसा हो सकता है तो उसको मैं प्रॉब्लम आंसर रखता हूँ यू में जनरली हिमाचूरिया नहीं होता बर्निंग म्यूचुरेशन होती है तो डिस्मॉर्फिक आर अगर आ रही हैं तो हिमाचूरिया हो रहा है अब एम और पी एस की बात करूं तो एम सी डी इज़ अ टाइप ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम ऑफ नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम में जो मेन फीचर होता है दैट इज लिपिडूरिया तो इसमें पेशेंट को आपको क्या दिखेगा फोमी यूरिन यूरिन में झाग आएगी लिपिड्स आएंगे लिपिड की कास्ट मिलेंगी तो एम सी डी इज़ नेफ्रोटिक ये रूल्ड आउट हो रहा है सो हेमाचूरिया की अगर मैं बात करूँ तो आपको दो चीज़ें दिमाग में रखनी है प्रैक्टिस में तो मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज स्टोन स्टोन या तो वो किडनी में हो या ब्लैडर में हो मीन स्टोन और कैलकुलर लेकिन इसके अलावा हेमाचूरिया का जो आपको याद रखना है एम सी क्यू पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से हमेशा ग्लोमेलो नेफ्राइटिस के क्वेश्चन में भी हेमाचूरिया होता है और ग्लोमेलो नेफ्राइटिस दो तरीके की होती है नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम और नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम तो याद रखो मेरी बात नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम में हेमाचूरिया होता है अब हमारे पास दो ऑप्शन रूल आउट हो गया बचता है पी एस जी एन पी एस जी एन इज़ अ टाइप ऑफ नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम या ब्लैडर कैलकुलर है तो so, इसको याद करने के लिए एक मैं रूल आपको बता रहा हूँ डेट इज़ कॉल्ड फोर्टी इज टू फाइव इज टू वन रूल अगर आपकी बॉडी में फोर्टी परसेंट और मोर डिसमोर्फिक आर बी सी है फोर्टी परसेंट और मोर डिसमोर्फिक आर बी सी फाइव परसेंट और मोर एकेंथोसाइट्स एंड इवन वन सिंगल आर बी सी कास्ट तो इन तीनों में से कोई भी एक चीज़ है तो हम ये मानते हैं कि जो हिमाचूरिया है दैट इज़ ग्लो मेरुलर इन ओरिजिन अब इसको देखिए कि तेरह साल के बच्चे में स्टोन की प्रोबेबिलिटी थोड़ी कम होती है दूसरा यहाँ पे स्मोकी यूरिन तो स्मोकी यूरिन दिया हुआ है तो इसके जो दूसरे सिनोनिम होते हैं वो कोला कलर यूरिन आइस टी कलर यूरिन स्मोकी यूरिन अब कोला कलर से आपको आंसर मिल गया दैट इज़ पी एस तो याद रखिए जब ये कॉज दिया है इट मीन्स Hematuria is due to glomerulonephritis. So just in simple language, I can say, अगर किसी पेशेंट को स्टोन की वजह से हेमाचूरिया हो रहा है तो आर बी सी की शेप होगी वो स्टोन की वजह से एक साथ आर बी सी एक ही शेप की कटेंगे इसको बोलते हैं आइसोमोर्फिक आर बी सी तो यू विल सी आइसोमोर्फिक आर बी सी और अगर ग्लोमर नेफ्राइटिस की वजह से हो रहा है नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम की वजह से हो रहा है तब आपको क्या मिलेंगी डिसमोर्फिक आर बी सी तो ये आपको दो चीज़ें याद रखनी है फिर एग्ज़ाम में एक क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं कि जितनी ये ग्लोमर नेफ्राइटिस है इनका क्वेश्चन को कैसे सॉल्व करना है तो जस्ट मैं आपको बता रहा हूँ कि कुछ ग्लोमर नेफ्राइटिस नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम होती हैं तो मैं शॉर्ट में लिखता हूँ नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम और कुछ ग्लोमर नेफ्राइटिस में नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम तो क्लासिकल फीचर आपको याद रखना है नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम के अंदर पेशेंट को हेमाचूरिया मिलेगा और नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम के अंदर जो क्लासिकल फीचर मिलता है दैट इज प्रोटीनोरिया कुछ डिसीज ऐसे भी होती हैं जिनमें आपको दोनों के फीचर मिलेंगे दोनों के मींस पेशेंट को नेफ्राइटिक भी होगा नेफ्रोटिक भी होगा तो अब इसको समझते हैं नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम जो आपको मिलेगा उसको याद करने का एक निमोनिक में दे रहा हूँ उसका नाम होता है परी पी फोर पी एस जी एन पोस्ट स्टेप्टोकोकल ग्लोमो नेफ्राइटिस ऐसे दो चीजें यहाँ पर अल्पर्ट सिंड्रोम और ऐसे एंटी जीबीएम एंटी जीबीएम का मतलब होता है एंटी ग्लोमरुलर बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन एंटी जीबीएम को हम गुड पास्चर सिंड्रोम भी बोलते हैं एंटी जीबीएम इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एस गुड पास्चर सिंड्रोम आर स्टैंड फॉर आरपीजीएन आरपीजीएन और आई का मतलब होगा यहाँ आई जी ए नेफ्रोपैथी आई जी ए नेफ्रोपैथी आई जी नेफ्रोपैथी को हम बोलते हैं बर्जर्स डिसीज बर्जर्स डिसीज तो so, ये मैंने जो पांच डिसीज लिखी है मैं लेबलिंग भी कर दे रहा हूँ बिकॉज निमोनिक में चार चार पी ए आ रही है तो आपको चार लगेगा लेकिन पांच है एक दो तीन चार पांच ये आपको याद रखना दीज आर प्राइमरली नेफ्राइटिक नेफ्रोटिक की बात करूँ तो यहाँ पर 
आपको तीन डिसीज याद रखनी है विच आर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज एम मिनिमल चेंज डिसीज फिर जो हमारे पास आता है एम मेम्ब्रेन ग्लोबल नेफ्राइटिस एंड थर्ड इज वोकल सेगमेंटल ग्लोमेरोस्क्लोसिस एफ एस जी एस तो कई बार क्वेश्चन आता है कि ऑल एक्सेप्ट फैशन में ऑल आर नेफ्राइटिक सिंड्रोम एक्सेप्ट ऑल आर नेफ्राटिक एक्सेप्ट और याद रखिए दो डिसीज आपको याद रखें जिनमें दोनों के फीचर होंगे एक होता है एम पी जी एन मेम्ब्रेनो प्रोलीफ्रेटिव ग्लोमेनोफ्राइटिस और दूसरा होता है डी पी जी एन डी पी जी एन कुछ नहीं है एसली नेफ्राइटिस के छह टाइप होते हैं तो टाइप वन टू थ्री में उतने सिम्टम नहीं होते और टाइप फोर में पेशेंट को सबसे ज़्यादा सिम्टम होते हैं तभी पेशेंट डॉक्टर के पास आता है तो टाइप फोर का ही डायग्नोस होता है प्रैक्टिस में और टाइप फाइव एंड सिक्स दीज आर एडवांस डिसीज तो टाइप फोर इज मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप डायग्नोस्ड और टाइप फोर एस एल नेफ्राइटिस को हम क्या बोलते हैं डी पी और याद रखिए डिसमोर्फिक आर इज अ क्लासिकल फीचर ऑफ ग्लोमरुलर डैमेज मीन्स ग्लोमर नेफ्राइटिस वो स्टोर में नहीं मिलेगा मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन अगेन दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ये तो आप uh, पिछले पाँच साल का रिकॉर्ड देख लो यहाँ से क्वेश्चन आते हैं एग्जाम में सो फीमेल पेशेंट हैविंग फीवर फॉर पास थ्री डेज एंड कैन नॉट टच नेक टू चेस्ट इसका मतलब क्या है आप देखो कि नेक रिजिडिटी है एल पी वॉज डन लंबर पंक्चर हुआ सी एस एफ फाइंडिंग्स आर तो आप देखोगे सी एस एफ की स्टडी से हमेशा क्वेश्चन आता है एग्जाम में तो सी एस एफ में आपको बेसिकली क्या क्या देखना होता है आपको पेशेंट का ओपनिंग प्रेशर देखना है ओपनिंग प्रेशर देन वी हैव टू सी प्रोटीन्स सी एस एफ में कितनी प्रोटीन्स उसके बाद आपको सी एस एफ का ग्लूकोज देखना है ग्लूकोज देखना है सी एस एफ का कलर देख लो और नेचर देख लो कि वो टर्बिड है या नॉर्मल क्लियर है वाटर जैसा है या थोड़ा उसमें गाढ़ापन आ गया विस्कोसिटी बढ़ गई है तो इन सारे सारे पैरामीटर्स पर आपको बात करनी है अब जनरली जो एग्ज़ाम में क्वेश्चन आता है आपके पास तीन डिफरेंशियल होते हैं और ये बहुत इजी क्वेश्चन होता है पता नहीं इससे इतना क्यों डर लगता है लोगों को देखो आपको एग्ज़ाम में या तो बैक्टीर मैनेजाइटिस पूछते हैं याद रखना बैक्टीरिया के जैसी फंगस होती है फंगस में फंगस में आर वेरी रेयर तो जनरली पेशेंट को हिस्ट्री होगी इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइजेशन की तो क्वेश्चन जो आपको एग्जाम में मिलता है बैक्टीरिया और दे कैन आस्क यू क्वेश्चन ऑन माइको बैक्टीरिया मीन ट्यूबर क्लब टीबी भी बैक्टीरिया है लेकिन थोड़ा सा अलग है और तीसरा वायरल अब बैक्टीरिया में पस बनती है तो बैक्टीरियल मैनेजाइटिस को हम पायोजेनिक भी बोलते हैं और वायरल मैनेजाइटिस को हम एसेप्टिक बोलते हैं सो वी कॉल दिस एसेप्टिक ना अंडरस्टैंड ओपनिंग प्रेशर सी एस एफ ओपनिंग प्रेशर इन प्रोटीन ये हर मैनेजाइटिस के अंदर बढ़ेगी तो मैं यहाँ बस एरो लगा रहा हूँ याद रखो मेरा स्टेटमेंट ओपनिंग प्रेशर एंड प्रोटीन्स विल इंक्रीज इन ऑल मैनेजाइटिस सब में बढ़ गई अब आ, आ, याद रखो कि आ, अगर बैक्टीरिया है तो कुछ कलर हो भी सकता है या नॉर्मल कलर जैसे कुछ बैक्टीरिया पिगमेंट जिनके पास होता है दे विल गिव सम कलर और जब प्रोटीन बढ़ रही है तो आप देखोगे थोड़ा सा प्रोटीन बढ़ रहा है कुछ ना कुछ पिगमेंट्स आ रहे हैं तो नेचर थोड़ा सा टर्बिड हो जाएगा मींस यू विल सी अ थिक सी एस एफ टीबी बैक्टीरिया में अगेन या तो ये स्ट्रॉ कलर का होगा हो सकता है लेकिन ये वाटरी भी रहे मीन्स क्लियर रहे लेकिन थिक तो हो जाएगा लेकिन वायरल का कलर भी क्लियर होता है पानी के जैसा और नेचर भी क्लियर होता है सो अगेन टेक होम मैसेजेस इफ यू सी बैक्टीरियल मैनेजाइटिस टी बी इज ऑल्सो बैक्टीरिया सो देर विल बी आई कैन से सम देर मे सम कलर ओनली दो बैक्टीरिया हु हैव द कलर हु हैव सम पिगमेंट दे विल प्रोवाइड सम कलर बट बट इट विल बी थिक वायरल इट इज नॉट थिक इट इज क्लियर ना रिमेंबर बैक्टीरिया लव शुगर एंड दिस इज द बिगेस्ट एंट इन द एम सी क्यू तो नॉर्मली इन सी एफ वी हैव टू थर्ड ऑफ ब्लड ग्लूकोज तो हमारी बॉडी में लाइक like, uh, जो ग्लूकोज है उसका टू थर्ड किसमें सी एस एफ में सो बैक्टीरिया लव ग्लूकोज दे विल ईट ऑल द ग्लूकोज तो सी एस एफ सी एस एफ में आप देखोगे मीन्स बैक्टीरियल मैनजाइटिस के अंदर ग्लूकोज कम होगा बिकॉज बैक्टीरिया सारे शुगर को खा जाएंगे सो दिस विल डिक्रीज थे भी बैक्टीरिया इन वायरल इट विल बी नॉर्मल तो याद रखो विद दिस इन माइंड वी विल सी द क्वेश्चन नाउ एंड ट्राई टू आंसर दिस 
अब देखो अपीरेंस कैसा है वाइट क्लाउडी तो यहां से कुछ हिंटे मिल रही है सेल्स में न्यूट्रोफिल्स ओके वन मोर थिंग जस्ट जस्ट अगर सेल्स की बात करूं तो याद रखो अगर बैक्टीरियल मैनजाइटिस है बैक्टीरिया मीन्स जनरल दे दे ट्रिगर एन एक्यूट इन्फ्लामेशन सो मेन सेल्स विल बी पॉलीमोर्फो न्यूट्रोफिल्स टी बी बैक्टीरिया है बट दिस विल ट्रिगर ए क्रॉनिक इन्फ्लामेशन सो हियर हियर मेन सेल्स इन ट्यूबरकुलर मेन सेल्स विल बी मैसको पी एम एन एंड मेन सेल्स विल बी लिम्फोसाइट्स एंड इन वायरल ऑल्सो मेन सेल्स विल बी लिम्फोसाइट्स ये आपको याद रखना है अब यहां पर जब दे दिया है न्यूट्रोफिल्स आगे देखते हैं सी एस एफ शुगर इज फिफ्टीन तो एक इंसान की बॉडी में अगर मैं बात करूं सपोज मेरा ब्लड शुगर हंड्रेड से वन ट्वेंटी के बीच में रहेगा इफ आई एम नॉन डायबिटिक तो ये मेरे ब्लड शुगर होगा दिस विल बी माई ब्लड शुगर सो माई सी एस एफ शुगर विल बी टू थर्ड ऑफ दिस अगर आप इसका टू थर्ड निकालोगे हंड्रेड का टू थर्ड विल बी सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स सो इट इज इन द रेंज ऑफ सिक्सटी टू एट्टी तो सी एस एफ में नॉर्मल लोगों में नॉन डायबिटिक लोगों में सिक्सटी टू एट्टी मिलीग्राम पर डेज लीटर शुगर होता है यहाँ पर देखो सी एस एफ शुगर कम हो गया तो शुगर कम हो गया प्रोटीन को देखना ही नहीं है प्रोटीन तो किसी में भी बढ़ता है सब में बढ़ता है अब देखो शुगर कम है और न्यूट्रोफिल्स है तो फंगल मैनजाइटिस में हिस्ट्री होनी चाहिए इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइजेशन की वो हिस्ट्री नहीं दे रखी वायरल में ग्लूकोज कैसा रहेगा वायरल में ग्लूकोज विल बी नॉर्मल यहाँ पर ग्लूकोज कम है अब बचा टीबी और बैक्टीरिया टीबी में लिम्फोसाइट्स होंगे न्यूट्रोफिल्स किस में होगा न्यूट्रोफिल्स विल बी इन बैक्टीरियल अब आ, कुछ लोग बोलते हैं कि टी में हमने पढ़ा था कॉब वेब सी एस एफ तो उसके हिसाब से वाइट क्लाउडी सी एस एफ को कॉब वेब बोलते हैं तो टी बी आंसर होना चाहिए लेकिन देखो टी में सेल्स कैसे होंगे लिम्फोसाइट्स देर आर सम अदर बैक्टीरिया ऑल्सो वहाँ पर भी वाइट क्लाउडी आ सकता है इस क्लियर तो वहाँ पर भी वाइट क्लाउड हो सकता है तो ऐसा आपको नहीं दे सोचना है कि सिर्फ वन लाइन रट के आंसर नहीं करना है सारे पैरामीटर्स आपको पढ़ने हैं कुछ बैक्टीरिया के पास कोई पिगमेंट नहीं होगा तो वहाँ पर भी आपको क्लाउडी सी मिलेगा हर बैक्टीरियल मैनेजाइटिस के अंदर सी में कलर नहीं आता इनफैक्ट जब आप प्रैक्टिस करोगे आप देखोगे ये कलर का कोई कॉन्सेप्ट होता ही नहीं है तो कलर को आपको ध्यान नहीं देना है हम जो बोलते हैं प्रैक्टिस में सूडोमोनास का ग्रीन कलर मैंने आज तक कभी ग्रीन कलर का सी एस हुए नहीं देखा क्लियर तो इस, इस आपको समझना है कि सी एस एफ जनरली क्लियर ही होता है और इट कैन बी विस्कस इट कैन बी क्लाउडी बट कलर आपको जनरली देखने को नहीं मिलता है तो न्यूट्रोफिल्स हैं शुगर कम हो रही है तो मोर चांस इट इज बटर मैनजाइटिस तो ये एक टेबल मैं चाहता हूँ एक बार आप हाथ से बनाओ पक्का यहाँ से क्वेश्चन आना ओके तो आगे चलते हैं फॉलोइंग ड्रग इज बेस्ट फॉर यूरेट लोवरिंग थेरेपी इन ट्यूमर लाइसिस सिंड्रोम अब इसको देखो अगर आप यहाँ ऑप्शन देखोगे एलोप्रिनोल फेबुक्सोस्टाइट फिर रेसब्यूरिक ये सारे के सारे ड्रग यूरिक एसिड को कम करते हैं सो ऑल दीज आर ऑल दीज आर यूरेट लोवरिंग ड्रग्स तो यूरेट लोवरिंग ड्रग्स तो बेसिकली ये फार्माकोलॉजी मेडिसिन का ओवरलैप एम है फिर एक डायोरेटिक होती है तो पहले जस्ट मैं यहाँ कुछ बताना चाह रहा हूँ ट्यूमर लाइसिस सिंड्रोम के बारे में अगर किसी ट्यूमर का ब्रेकडाउन हुआ किसी की कीमो चल रही है या रेडियोथेरेपी चल रही है सो विथ सी टी और आर टी ट्यूमर सेल्स विल ब्रेक डाउन एंड दिस विल लीड टू इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इम्बैलेंस सो इलेक्ट्रोलाइट इम्बैलेंस जो आपको याद रखना है कि पेशेंट का कैल्शियम कम हो जाएगा लेकिन बाकी सब बाकी सब बढ़ जाएगा बाकी सारे इलेक्ट्रोलाइट बढ़ेंगे मीन्स देर विल बी हाई पर नेट्रीमिया हाई पर किलीमिया हाई पर यूरिसीमिया अब यूरिक एसिड बढ़ रहा है तो उसको कैसे कंट्रोल करोगे सो जनरली यूरिक एसिड कम करने के लिए हम क्या देते हैं जैंथिन ऑक्सीडेज इनिबेटर सो जैंथिन ऑक्सीडेज इनिबेटर हमारे पास यहाँ पर ये दोनों हैं ये दोनों गाउट में तो अच्छे इफेक्टिव होते हैं बट याद रखिए ये इसमें काम नहीं करेंगे फिर अगर बात करूँ फिरोसेमाइड की अगर आप पेशेंट को डायोरेटिक यहाँ पर देते हो तो देखो पहले से पेशेंट को कैल्शियम कम है पेशेंट का और फिरोसोमाइड इस लू प्रायोरिटिक इसको देने के बाद कैल्शियम और कम हो जाएगा कैल्शियम विल भी फर्दर लू इसलिए इसको नहीं दोगे सो जस्ट रिमेंबर रैस ब्यूरिकेस बर्ड्स के अंदर एक एंजाइम होता है यूरिकेस उस रिकॉमनेंट डीएनए टेक्नोलॉजी से ड्रग बनता है सो वी हैव वन मोर ड्रग रैस ब्यूरिकेस वन मोर इज पैगलोटी केस सो दीज ड्रग्स आर लिटल बिट एक्सपेंसिव सो वी यूज दिस दीज टू ड्रग्स वन आई दर वन पेशेंट हैविंग रिफ्रैक्टरी गाउट 
रिफ्रैक्टरी गाउट मीन्स आपने पेशेंट को सब चला लिया फिर भी उसका गाउट ठीक नहीं हो रहा है यूरिक एसिड कम नहीं हो रहा सेकेंड इज वी यूज दिस ड्रग डी दिस ड्रग इन ट्यूमर लाइसिस सिंड्रोम अगर किसी पेशेंट को हाइपर यूरिसमिया है ड्यू टू ट्यूमर लाइसिस सिंड्रोम इन दैट केस यू विल यूज रेसबेरी केस तो ये आपको याद रखना है मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट एम सी क्यू दैट इज अक्रॉनिक लिवर डिसीज पेशेंट प्रेजेंटेड ओपीडी तो सी एल डी का पेशेंट है तो सी एल डी का पेशेंट है तो आपको ऑटोमेटिक दिमाग में समझ जाओगे इस पेशेंट को असाइटिस तो हो गई होगा तो मोस्ट पेशेंट विद सी एल डी विल हैसाइटिस पेट में पानी भरा हुआ है आगे दे दिया असाइटिक फ्लूड एग्जामिनेशन रिविल न्यूट्रोफिल्स फाइव हंड्रेड पर माइक्रोलीटर अगर आप असाइटिक फ्लूड का एग्जामिनेशन करोगे तो जनरली आप देखोगे आप पेट में पानी भरा हुआ तो आप पेशेंट को डायबिटिक देते हो असाइटिक फ्लूड वेन एवर यू आर चेकिंग तो असाइटिक फ्लूड में हम बेसिकली क्या चेक करते हैं तो हम सैंपल को भेजते हैं द सैंपल वी चेक द सैंपल वी सेंड द सैंपल फॉर असाइटिक फ्लूड में आपको क्या क्या देखना है आपको देखना है पेशेंट के सेल्स वी चेक फॉर ए टिपिकल सेल्स सो ये सेल्स नॉर्मल सेल्स मीन्स न्यूट्रोफिल्स है डब्ल्यू बी सी कितने हैं तो ये सैंपल पैथोलॉजी लैब में जाएगा फिर ये असाइटिक फ्लूड का एक सैंपल बायोकेमिस्ट्री लैब में जाएगा जहाँ पर हम प्रोटीन देखते हैं प्रोटीन में आपको असाइटिक फ्लूड की एल्बुमिन देखनी है और जब आपके पास एल्बुमिन आ गई तो आप साग रेशियो निकालोगे आपके पास जो एल एफ टी रिपोर्ट होगी एल एफ टी रिपोर्ट यू विलैक सीरम एल्बुमिन सीरम एल्बुमिन माइनस असाइटिक फ्लूड एल्बुमिन दैट डिफरेंस इज कॉल्ड साग सीरम असाइटिस एल्बुमिन ग्रेडियंट सो दिस सैम्पल विल बी गोइंग टू बायोकेमिस्ट्री लैब दिस विल बी गोइंग इन पैथोलॉजी लैब This is going into path lab. This will go to biochem lab. We will also uh, send the sample for glucose. So again, this will go into biochem lab. Then third sample, we are sending this uh, to microbiology lab for culture. Culture के लिए और क्या करोगे आप? Then you can also uh, see like uh, growth of some bacteria. Culture पता चल जाएगा आपको. This will be go where? This will be going into micro lab. अब यहाँ पर दिया हुआ है कि पेशेंट के न्यूट्रोफिल्स बड़े हुए हैं इसका मतलब कोई ना कोई बैक्टीरिया का इन्फेक्शन है सो so, इसको एक कंडीशन होती है इसको हम बोलते हैं स्पॉन्टेनस बैक्टेरियल पैटोनाइटिस एस बी पी तो एस बी पी को कैसे डायग्नोज करोगे वेन यू विल सी इन एसाइटिक फ्लूड सैम्पल इफ न्यूट्रोफिल्स इफ आई कैन से डब्ल्यू बी सी अगर आप देखोगे टोटल डब्ल्यू बी सी दीज आर मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड and out of this, out of this, if neutrophils, अगर इसमें से भी अगर neutrophils count are more than 250, तो फिफ्टी तो अंडरस्टैंड दिस यहाँ पर ऑलरेडी दिया हुआ है कि न्यूट्रोफिल्स पाँच सौ से ज़्यादा हैं दिस वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट मैंने आपको बताया टोटल डब्ल्यू बी सी शुड भी मोर देन फाइव हंड्रेड पर माइक्रोलीटर एंड आउट ऑफ दिस अगर सिर्फ न्यूट्रोफिल्स पाँच सौ ज़्यादा ऑलरेडी दे रखे हैं लेकिन हमको तो टू फिफ्टी चाहिए थी then this is how we make a diagnosis of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis iska matlab spontaneous means all of a sudden bacterial peritonitis ab jo pani bhara hua that fluid is occurring in abdominal cavity that fluid is very dangerous this can lead to death of the patient so in this case how you will manage in this case uh, we will give injection of ceftriaxone or we can use injection of ceftriaxone so drug of choice drug of choice will be cephalosporin ab now this patient should not develop this again so for prophylaxis for prophylaxis we give norfloxacin for prophylaxis we give norfloxacin so again this question already came so i am expecting ki is bar aap se ye puch le So this will be expected question or fluxation, which drug we use for for prophylaxis of spontaneous bacterial peritonitis. Agle question pe chalte hain. Again, this is a favorite topic. Bar bar exam mein puchte hain like uh, what are various markers. So ab dekhoge yahan pe HBS antigen negative, anti HBS antibody negative, anti HBC antibody negative, anti HBE negative. Sab kuch to negative hai. Ek ye positive, anti HBS antibody positive. So again, this type of question they ask in exam. So just I want to uh, tell you some markers. Look at the screen. Markers. याद करने का तरीका होता है C E C E S. 
एस सी ई सी एस मीन्स एच बी एस एंटीजन हेपेटाइटिस बी सरफेस एंटीजन सपोज इफ दिस मार्कर इज पॉजिटिव अगर ये पॉजिटिव है दिस इज टेलिंग यू लाइक दर इज एंट्री ऑफ द वायरस एच बी सी एंटीजन पॉजिटिव अब जनरली ये पॉजिटिव होता ही नहीं है बिकॉज दिस इज लाइक कोर वायरस का कोर्स वायरस इज इन नैनोमीटर उसका भी कोर्स इट्स नॉट डिटेक्टेड सो एक एमसी के आपसे पूछ सकते हैं विच इज नॉट डिटेक्टेड इन लेबोरेटरी अगर डिटेक्ट हो भी गया दैट विल नॉट मेक सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पैक्ट ऑन योर एमसी क्यू एंड योर प्रैक्टिस देन वी हैव एच बी ई एंटीजन नॉट इज एच बी ई एंटीजन द वायरस विच एंटर योर बॉडी दैट वायरस इज नाउ रेप्लीकेटिंग डिवाइडिंग so this is a marker of infectivity means virus uh, when it is replicating or when it is dividing it means viral load is more more viral load means again more viral load means that infection will now turn to be infective then we have antibody anti hbc antibody this antibody will be of two type it can be igm or it can be igg If it is IgM, if it is IgM, it means acute infection. And if it is IgG, it is a chronic infection. So how we write this IgM anti-HBC antibody, IgG anti-HBC antibody? Then we have anti-HBE antibody. So suppose if this is positive, acute, this this is positive, chronic. एच बी ई एंटीजन वॉज टेलिंग यू अबाउट इन्फेक्टिविटी नाउ इफ यू डेवलप एंटीबॉडी अगेंस्ट इट मीन इट इज नो लॉन्गर इन्फेक्टिव इट इज नो लॉन्गर इन्फेक्टिव इट इज नो मोर इन्फेक्टिव एंड एंटी एच बी एस एंटीबॉडी पॉजिटिव इट मीन्स द वायरस हू एंटर योर बॉडी नाउ इट इज टोटली क्योर्ड But if only this is positive, it means that is telling you status of vaccinated. So let us see the question now. Look at the screen carefully. HBS antigen negative. जब ये negative है, it means there is no entry. There is no entry of virus. Anti HBS antibody negative. ये भी negative है. Anti HBC antibody positive. I mean this is positive. This is given positive. This is something given positive. Anti HB, बाकी सब नेगेटिव ही है सो अंडरस्टैंड समटाइम वॉट हैपन दर इज अ पीरियड कॉल्ड विंडो पीरियड सो विंडो पीरियड में क्या होता है लाइक आई जी एम इज वेरी फास्ट आई जी एम इज वेरी फास्ट इन योर बॉडी लाइक आई जी एम कैन टर्न पॉजिटिव बिफोर सरफेस एंटीजन टू टर्न पॉजिटिव सो दिस फेज इज कॉल्ड विंडो पीरियड क्लियर तो आपको याद रखना है यहाँ पर क्वेश्चन को ध्यान से देखना है लाइक एंटी एच बी सी एंटीबॉडी पॉजिटिव सो इट वुड बी आई जी एम आई जी जी तो दिस पीरियड इज वॉट वी कॉल वी कॉल दिस विंडो पीरियड बाकी सब नेगेटिव दिए सो जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस और किस तरीके से क्वेश्चन पूछते हैं जस्ट लेट मी ट्राई टू कन्फ्यूज यू लिटिल सो दैट यू कैन गेट एन आइडिया वट टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन दे आस्क एन एग्जाम सो दे विल गिव यू सम ऑफ दिस मार्क इज पॉजिटिव सपोज ये पॉजिटिव दे दिया पॉजिटिव 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 तो यू कैन सी हियर एंट्री हो गई डिवाइड कर रहा है इन्फेक्टिव आई जी एम पॉजिटिव एक्यूट इट इज एक्यूट इन्फेक्टिव हेपेटाइटिस बी सपोज इफ आई राइट लाइक दिस दिस विल बी क्रॉनिक इन्फेक्टिव हेपेटाइटिस बी क्रॉनिक नॉन इन्फेक्टिव अगर मैं इसको पॉजिटिव कर दू तो क्रॉनिक इन्फेक्टिव सपोज इफ आई डू दिस पॉजिटिव This will become chronic. Now it is non-infective. Suppose if I write like this, this will be acute non-infective hepatitis B. And ultimately, suppose if nothing is positive or only this is positive, so there is no entry. Virus can enter anyway. This is called vaccinated. Vaccinated. And if I say this is positive, so this is the patient cured. Yeah, ठीक हो गया. Now uh, understand. Uh, Sometimes they can ask you like, IgM anti-HBC is positive. So this phase, this phase is called window period. 
because uh, after a few days you will see HBS antigen will turn positive. So this is very very important. Bar bar exam mein aap sab puchte hain like uh, markers of hepatitis B. Moving to next one, in patient with dialysis dementia, what is deposited in cerebral cortex? So first they are asking you dialysis dementia. So many of you can uh, confuse ki dialysis word de diya. So uh, we think it could be like uh, A beta to M type of, but they are asking which what is amyloid deposit in cortex? Brain mein kaun si hogi? So brain mein to A beta hoti hai. A beta to M is seen in kidney. Amyloid transthyretin, it is seen in heart. Right? So answer is A beta. The, I think it's repeated twice. So A beta amyloid. So again they ask you one question on amyloid. Let us see this amyloid. So we have A L type of amyloid. A A type of amyloid. A beta 2 M. A beta. A T T R. I A P. I A P P. Then what we have? I A P. So then uh, understand this thing. Now what type of question they ask? One more I can say A call. So let us see. A L means amyloid light chain. So A L amyloid is also called as primary amyloid. Primary amyloid is seen in a patient of multiple myeloma. So you have to remember one MCQ in exam. A A is called secondary amyloid. Secondary amyloid is seen in a patient with chronic inflammation. Ye chronic inflammation mein hogi. Or uh, sometimes you can see uh, AA type of amyloidosis, you can see in a rare condition called familial Mediterranean fever. So, just be chronic inflammation, like in India, the most common cause is TB, but in the world, it is rheumatoid arthritis. So, just be like ulcerative colitis, uh, Crohn's disease, chronic inflammation. A type, expected question. A beta 2M, A beta 2M, it is seen in kidney. So in dialysis patient, but in kidney. In CKD patient, in kidney. Right? A beta is amyloid, also, amyloid of your brain. So CNS amyloid. So basically, what will in Alzheimer's disease patient? Here, if you ask, they can mention you CKD patient or patient uh, uh, like who is recipient of kidney transplant or patient on dialysis. Now, the question is confused. Kya kiya? Dialysis patient de diya. So, we thought it could be A beta 2M. But they are asking you what is deposited in cortex. In cortex, what we have? We have A beta. ATTR. ATTR is uh, amyloid transthyretin. So, it is seen in heart. So, in a patient of restrictive uh, cardiomyopathy. ATTR, sometimes you can see it is deposited in few conditions like uh, we call this familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy. And sometimes you can see in condition, this is FAB, one hai, familiar, I don't know polyposis, hai, familial amyloidotic polyneuropathy and senile systemic amyloidosis. IAPP, islet associated pancreatic polypeptide, so it is something, pancreatic means it is an amyloidosis of pancreas and where you will see this, you will see this in a patient of diabetes. Then isolated atrial amyloid, this is like also uh, an amyloid which we see in atria in heart but remember it is an amyloid that we see only and only where in atria so ye atria mein hoga ventricles mein hoga this is seen in the atria not in the ventricles so we call this isolated atrial amyloid so it can be in right atria left atria a cal is an amyloid cal stand for calcitonin calcitonin is released from parafollicular cells of uh, your thyroid gland so waha ka jo tumor hota usko bolte hai MTC, medullary thyroid carcinoma. So this is again a list of amyloid which you have to remember one question in exam. Very very important. Exam se pahle padhne se baat. Moving to next one. Ab dekho ye maina isli dal diya. I know many of you are knowing this answer, but again ye baar baar pichle three saal se pooch rahe hain. I am expecting like this could be again a question on this. A known patient with type one diabetes present with finding of DK. RBS is 400. Ketones are three positive. So DK ka diagnose banane ke liye, to make a diagnose of DK, you will have D for diabetic range blood sugar. So basically diabetic range to man likh diya, but blood sugar is mostly in the range of 300 to 600 milligram per deciliter. K for ketosis means if you see ketone bodies, ketone bodies should be positive. A for acidosis. 
a for acidosis means you will see ph ph kaisa hoga acidic ph hoga so ph will be less in this question you can see uh, let us see how many things are needed to make a diagnosis we need all three we need all three but again question mein to mention hi kar diya na like patient is having findings of dk then they have mentioned like patient is having ketones are three positive so following is most appropriate in management so let us see start infusion of insulin immediately in dk remember primary goal of treatment so dk mein sabse pehle aapko kya karna hai we have to give Uh, we have to flush these ketone bodies with fluid. So always remember, infusion of insulin immediately. No. Give subcutaneous insulin. No. Instead of subcutaneous, what we will prefer? We will prefer IV. आपको IV देना है because bioavailability of IV drug is hundred percent. A fluid bolus followed by insulin infusion. This is correct. पहले आपको fluid देना है. No insulin needed. No. We have to give insulin. So just remember the stepwise management of a DK. Just I'm writing this because बार बार बच्चे गलती करते हैं कि नहीं इंसुलिन दे दो पहले इंसुलिन तो देना ही है तो फर्स्ट एंड द मोस्ट प्रायोरिटी इज वी हैव टू गिव फ्लूड फ्लूड वॉट फ्लूड वी गिव वी कैन गिव एन एस तो वी आर यूजिंग नॉर्मल सलाइन So this is the fluid of choice ns so when you are using ns normal saline when we are giving so initially we give like a huge we give a lot of fluid we give fast bolus after ns what we give we give regular insulin the regular insulin so aapko ns ke bolus dene then regular insulin we given a dose of 0.1 mg per kg 0.1 mg per kg start iv so suppose if my weight is 80 kg so you have to give me 80 into 0.1 that is 8 units so aapko wo iv utna hi dose dena hai then what we do we continue normal saline followed by half normal saline half normal saline ko kya bolta hai n by 2 plus insulin so this we continue iv fluid we continue insulin and this insulin like we give continue with infusion pump then insulin can cause a uh, uh, potassium deficiency then we can add kcl we can give kcl and uh, if you do the ab analysis suppose if patient ph is very low in that case we can add soda bicarb otherwise uh, generally in most cases remember soda bicarb is not needed if you timely manage the patient so these are the things step wise manners which very very important because in exam they are asking you question but they are asking you like step wise approach iv fluid insulin iv fluid then regular insulin then we continue insulin again this insulin will also be same regular remember there is no role of subcutaneous insulin here unless patient is achieving or regaining his appetite he is improving kcl soda bicarb so this is uh, uh, this is like uh, how this how you have to manage a patient and as soon as patient regain appetite he is stable he is conscious he is talking he is alert then we can switch to subcutaneous insulin right so that is the approach which you have to remember so root of choice will be iv not subcutaneous now only one insulin we have that is uh, iv that is regular insulin so in some time exam they ask you lente we can use give no we have to use regular insulin so this is important step wise management so you have to remember these five points that's it. very important Moving to next one, a 37-year-old female complaint of weakness. Young female weakness, pallor of hand. Pallor of hand means anemia. She, not he, she also mentioned difficulty while having food. Difficulty while having food means there is some sort of dysphagia. Is the following suits probable diagnosis for this uh, lady? What do you think? So can uh, thyroid disorders can have anemia uh, rarely thyroid diseases uh, can cause uh, macrocytic anemia sometimes it can be normocytic anemia can myasthenia gravis again uh, very rarely if it could be peripheral neuropathy it could be due to b12 deficiency right but dysphagia is not seen in thyroid disease also like uh, we will see dysphagia unlikely 
so again we have to decode this question understand this patterson kelly syndrome the full name is patterson brown kelly syndrome we also call this plummer vinson syndrome so in plummer vinson syndrome or patterson uh, brown kelly syndrome what we see patient will have iron deficiency anemia there will be glossitis there will be a uh, post uh, cricoid esophageal web esophageal webs and because of these webs patient will develop dysphagia and it's a condition which is more in females so frankly telling you i have never seen a patient of this disease it's a rare disease but it's very common in mcq so plummer wilson syndrome now let us see what are the hints given here female so again you can see here female then you can see pallor so pallor means why pallor because of iron deficiency anemia then it is the biggest hint in the mcq like dysphagia dysphagia will occur because of the webs so sometimes they ask you the feature sometimes they ask you this is a triad and this is this disease is more in females so remember plumber wilson syndrome or patterson brown kelly syndrome iron deficiency anemia there will be glossitis now you will tell me sir glossitis is not given let it be but other things are matching right esophageal webs and that can cause dysphagia and it is more in females moving to next one again uh, you can see uh, this question came in exam so they sometimes ask you a question on mi and they ask they want you to locate the territory of mi so if do you see the ecg you can see lead to clear cut then uh, if i want to tell you you can see this in lead 3 also so classical st elevation then where else i can notice i can notice st elevation in uh, avf so lead 2 3 avf So two three AVF if you see ST elevation, it's the classical case of inferior volume MI, right? So just just remember uh, whenever they ask you, suppose if they give they have given changes in V one V two, if they have mentioned changes in lead V one and V two, it means septal arteries are involved. V two, V three, V four. This is suggesting of anterior volume MI, which is most common am v5 v6 lateral wall am lead 2 lead 3 avf inferior wall am and sometime if you see the changes in v7 v8 v9 in this case it is posterior wall am So these are like additional leads. So remember this uh, because th you have to see the territory of MI and MI is uh, pretty easy in exam. So you can notice here. Moving to uh, next one that is uh, a thirty-six year old woman present with ulceration over her finger. Ulceration over her fingers. She also has history of Raynaud phenomena and GERD since three years. Following can be used as a screening test. This is like a, a bit complicated question now. Uh, try to understand this first. You tell me uh, what is the diagnosis. So if you see diagnosis of this disease, patients having GERD and Raynaud phenomena. So what is the condition where we can see uh, Raynaud phenomena? So when it comes to Raynaud phenomena, it could be like uh, idiopathic. It could be cold climate, uh, or it could be due to I can say emotional drive. Sometimes people can develop Raynaud. But here they are they have mentioned GERD for a reason. So there is a syndrome called Crest syndrome. Crest stands for calcinosis, Raynaud, esophageal dysmotility, esophageal dysmotility. That's why she is having GERD. Sclerodactyly, sclerodactyly means if you see these fingers, these fingers are having these folds. These folds will be absent. Then what we have? We have telangiectasia. So in this, I have two hint. Means there is a uh, Raynaud phenomena. There is esophageal dysmotility that is leading to GERD. Crest syndrome is seen where uh, we see this in scleroderma. So scleroderma, we have different type, like systemic form called systemic sclerosis. Then localized version is called Crest syndrome. So understand this Crest uh, syndrome, scleroderma. Scleroderma, how we screen this? So now, uh, even though you know the question, you know the diagnosis, still many of you are thinking to mark the answer, like the antibody which is uh, specific for Crest syndrome is anti-centromer. But they are not asking you specific. They are asking you antibody for screening. So mark my word for screening. What antibody we have? We have Anna. 
I know here you made a mistake. But this mistake should not be repeated in exam. So understand this, whenever we assume or a case of scleroderma, first test what you will do, we will do ANA. If ANA turn to be positive, then we check for specific antibody and that is going to be, suppose if we are suspecting Kress syndrome, in that case it will be anti-centromere. If it is a, a systemic form, then we will check for anti topoisomerase. This is for systemic sclerosis, again specific antibody, anti-centromere specific antibody for Kress syndrome, anti-cardiolipin we see in APLA syndrome, so that is uh, again for screening, caution is for screening, so screening what we have, we have ANA, remember. So, ANA is screening test in traumatology, very, very important. So then we think about specific antibody. Clear? So, I hope the question is a bit clear. It was a bit complicated. Okay, guys. So, the question pe chalte hai. So, we have a patient presented with right-sided hemiparesis. That completely resolved in 6 hours. So, again, this is the hint in the MCQ. Like, uh, a patient is having hemiparesis, which is resolving in less than 24 hours. So, clear-cut diagnosis with this will be TIA. So, it is a case of transient ischemic attack. So, remember uh, for TIA, to define TIA, remember the uh, time limit is 24 hours. So, if a person who is having stroke-like presentation and uh, there is a complete resolution in less than 24 hours, we call that TIA. And uh, most TIA, they will resolve in less than 1 hour. Now, uh, what score will you use to determine the risk of future stroke in this patient? So, remember, understand this, we have discussed in the class also. For uh, like any TIA patient, uh, if you want to predict future chances of stroke and uh, we have to start them antiplatelet or I can say uh, anticoagulant, in that case we use a score, that score is ABCD2 score. ABCD2 score, so understand this, ABCD2 score meaning is age of the patient. So higher the age, higher is the chance of stroke. So if age is more than 60 year, we say like uh, we give one point, then B, B stands for BP. If patient BP is high, then uh, again, uh, like patient hypertensive, then that will give, then we will give one point. C stands for clinical features. So in clinical features, we have two things like uh, either uh, my patient is coming to you with hemiparesis, so I can say unilateral hemiparesis, or uh, my patient is coming uh, with a sudden uh, loss of speech or speech impairment. So, for higher age, we give 1 point, for hypertension, we give 1 point, for hemiparesis, we give 2 point, for speech loss, or I can say speech impairment. Now, understand if duration, D stands for duration. So, duration, if it is less than 10 minutes, uh, then we give nothing, we give score of 0. If it is in the range of 10 to 59 minutes, we give 1 point. And if it is uh, more than 1 hour or more than 60 minutes, then we give 2 point. So, higher the score, higher will be the chance of stroke in future. So, you have to remember A, B, C, D, 2 score. Okay, to uh, tell you about these other things, uh, CHATS S2 VAS score. This is a score. This is uh, like we used to initiate, uh, I can say, an like antiplatelet drug or I can say anticoagulant drug in a patient who is having atrial fibrillation. So, remember CHATS VAS score. It is to use embolus prophylaxis in atrial fibrillation. So, in a patient who is having atrial fibrillation, there is a chance like he or she can develop, uh, I can say, emboli and to uh, prevent that emboli, uh, what we are giving, we are giving antiplatelet and anticoagulant. CURB 65 score, it is uh, to assess the severity of pneumonia. It is to assess severity of pneumonia. And based on this score, we have to decide like uh, it's a case of pneumonia, whether to admit this patient and where to admit this patient. Means uh, suppose if score value is less, then we can simply discharge the patient. So treatment will be OPD basis. So you can start any, a macrolide or beta lactam and uh, tell the patient to take these medications for 5 to 7 days. If score value is more, then we need to decide is it uh, an ICU admission or it is a non-ICU simple ward admission. ABC2 we have discussed, Apache 2 score is used to assess uh, like uh, severity in acute pancreatitis. So, to assess the severity in pancreatitis, what we have, we have Apache 2 score. So, these are some scores which you have to remember. Coming to uh, next thing, uh, next MCQ, you can see a 33 year old woman. So, first hint in the MCQ is 33 year old. So, this is like a topic which is uh, I am seeing 
from past a one and a half year this is a question which is coming in almost every exam so if you see like if i talk about uh, fmg last exam then i can talk about uh, inict neat pg so in past year in last means uh, 2022 was loaded with this same topic same question again and again so just uh, uh, many of the students what they do a mistake like uh, whenever they see this type of question 33 year old woman with excessive date time sleepiness BMI is more, BP is high, partial pressure of oxygen 70, PCO2 53, bicarbonate 33, what is the most likely diagnosis? So uh, most people we think it's a case of uh, obstructive sleep apnea, we call this OSA. So let me just uh, tell you this thing, Cushing syndrome, there is uh, no other thing. So patients having only respiratory complaint, Cushing syndrome patient will have more complaint. So Cushing syndrome patient, they may also have sleeping difficulties, but they will also have some other features like there will be like uh, thin skin, uh, a centripetal obesity or central abdominal obesity, we call this lemon on stick appearance, thin limbs, uh, osteoporosis, uh, pre-diabetes or diabetes. So there will be many features in Cushing. So that's why it's ruled out. Now we have obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. So obstructive sleep apnea, here you will see like patient will have episodes of apnea and hypopnea. We call this AHI index. But I remember if patients are having features of uh, like, it could be the answer. So I can say I'm putting a dot here. Central sleep apnea, the problem will be in your brain. So understand this thing here. You can see like patient is obese. Obstructive sleep apnea, central sleep apnea, problem is not the obesity. It is a problem in the brain. So we are left with two options, obesity, hypoventilation syndrome and obstructive sleep apnea. So how we differentiate these two syndromes, remember? In obstructive hypoventilation syndrome, you can notice like a patient BMI will always be more than 30. So patient is um, always obese. First thing, then you can see patient will always be in a state of respiratory acidosis. Patient will always be in a state of respiratory acidosis. So these two things are present here. But if you see obstructive sleep apnea, uh, sometime like uh, I have seen few patients uh, which are not obese, but they can develop OSA. So remember these two are not, uh, obesity can cause OSA, but obesity is not a mandatory feature to be, or we wish to confirm OSA. So that is why the more correct answer for this question will be obesity hypoventilation syndrome. Why? Because reason number one, you can see patient BMI is more. So it is clear cut telling you about obesity. If you, if you look at the PCO2, PCO2 value is normal 35 to 45 at 53. So patient is in a state of respiratory acidosis. So both uh, two things it is satisfying. So that's why it's a case of respiratory acidosis. This is a case of obesity hypoventilation syndrome. So remember, this is one of the very important topics that they ask in exam. Moving to next one, which is the following uh, is best confirmed uh, confirmatory test to diagnose thalassemia trait. So remember, thalassemia trait is something which is uh, uh, very common uh, in Sindhis, Punjabis community and some Muslim communities even. I can say like uh, people living uh, near to a Bagha border, some part of India, some part of Pakistan. In that area, it's very common. Especially in like in India, talk about Himachal Pradesh, Punjab. So thalassemia trait means patient will not have much symptom, right? Family history is there. So how you will confirm? So basically they are asking you what is best test to diagnose thalassemia. Simple. To confirm. So remember for thalassemia means whenever there is a hemoglobin chain defect. So best test is HPLC. HPLC stands for high performance liquid chromatography. But sometimes it is not given in the option. So next best choice for this will be hemoglobin electrophoresis. So next best test will be hemoglobin electrophoresis. So just try to understand this thing. HPLC is the best test followed by electrophoresis. Now uh, you can see peripheral smear. In peripheral smear of thalassemia, you will see these type of cells. These type of cells, we call them target cells. Sometimes you can see uh, this type of cell, we call them teardrop cell. So again, but target cells, you can see in many other conditions. Similarly, teardrop cells, you can also see in myelofibrosis. So peripheral smear, mark my word, it is never a confirmatory test for any disease. So peripheral smear means it is nothing, it is like uh, uh, you are making a smear and pathologist seeing the smear under microscope. So it is never the investigation of choice. Now coming to nest trough test, which is naked eye single tube, so RBC osmotic fragility test. So let me just uh, uh, see this again. Naked eye single tube RBC osmotic fragility test. It is a test, uh, we use this for screening of thalassemia. For thalassemia screening, we can use this. But again, it is not for confirmatory, so that is unlikely the answer. 
Now, reticulocytosis means increase in reticulocyte count. So, reticulocyte count can be increased in many conditions. So, it can increase in any hemolytic anemia. So, again, reticulocytosis will never be confirmatory for any anemia. Now, uh, we are left with elevated HbA2. So, in hemoglobin electrophoresis, what we do? We see the level of hemoglobin A. We see the level of hemoglobin A2. And we see the level of hemoglobin F. So, this is how we confirm hemoglobin A, A2, hemoglobin F. So, ultimately, they have not given hemoglobin electrophoresis in the option, but uh, they have twisted the MCQ. So, answer for this question will become elevated HbA2. So that is indirectly telling you like this is electrophoresis but same question uh, like in future they will ask you so if this is the option given this is the best high performance liquid chromatography remember for honey hemoglobin chain defect so just i'm writing here for chain defect so where we see chain defect so chain defect we can see in thalassemia chain defect we can see in sickle cell anemia so in all these a chain problem the best test sequence, the best test will be HPLC followed by electrophoresis. Moving to next one. A 60 year old male, so 60 year, first hint always is age. So age is the hint. Known uh, hypertensive for 5 years. So patient is hypertensive for 5 years. So uh, whenever uh, like you see the case, something you should automatically, like in medicine, you will not get a simple like a one liner type of question. So you have to create something in your brain. 5 year hypertensive, so automatically understand this patient will be having uh, LVH, left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, so, most uh, patients uh, who, who are having hypertension, they develop LVH later on. Was uh, recently started on ACE inhibitors, so he is taking drugs. So now, you should think about ACE inhibitor side effect. It could be, it can, so we have to remember side effect will be like it can cause a dry cough, it can cause uh, angioedema. It can cause uh, hyperkalemia. So these things should be all always uh, in your head when you solve a clinical case. Then they are asking what is the electrolyte abnormality that you want to follow up. The next clinical case is simple. So answer is in front of you. So once you try to solve question like this, you will automatically get the answer. So what we are checking? ACE inhibitor can cause, even ARBs can cause mild to moderate hyperkalemia. And sometimes when they are causing a lot of hyperkalemia, what we have to do? We have to add uh, diuretics to remove this. But don't add potassium spray diuretics. So answer for this question will be hyperkalemia so what i want from you is like a medicine question is, question is always simple that's it's a bigger question just when you are reading it uh, try to make the differential diagnosis in your brain so let us see the next one a 50 year old male patient uh, came to opd with complaint of cough so cough is the hint shortness of breath weight loss this is the bigger hint so uh, x-ray is given so now understand you have to uh, read the question as well as x-ray finding. So in x-ray I can say suppose uh, you know nothing about x-ray. So you can see like uh, aspergilloma uh, it is like a fungal ball. You can see single patch. So that is uh, not a single patch. You can see multiple white fluffy opacity. So when you see multiple uh, white fluffy opacity these are nothing. These are uh, and even as you can see some uh, like hyalur LED in between. So it will be like a white uh, fluffy opacity, weight loss is the hint given. Now we need to correlate aspergilloma and later stages can cause ABPA, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. That can cause weight loss. Now see, uh, cuff is not the hint I will say because cuff you can see in any respiratory condition. So aspergilloma will not have history of weight loss first thing and it will not have uh, these multiple nodules. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis can have the weight loss because it is seen in immunocompromised patients. So, but again, uh, you can see like uh, there will be no multiple uh, this white fluffy opacity and if you see mesothelioma it's a tumor of pleura so whenever you see a tumor of pleura means it's a tumor of pleural cells pleural cells what they do they will secrete more pleural fluid so more pleural fluid means more mesothelial cells means more pleural fluid so it will present with pleural effusion so it will not present with white opacity you will see here pleural effusion so this is the case of METS because weight loss is there and you can see multiple white opacity and these opacities are called cannon ball appearance. These opacities, what do we call them? We call them cannon ball appearance. So this is very, very important. Clear? Okay, moving to next one. A patient came with symptom of hypercalcemia. So again, this is like uh, only two, three skull X-ray images they ask in exam. So I have intentionally not put uh, the image of multiple myeloma where you can see lytic bone lesion. So here you can see the skull, 
you can see some black and white spot in the skull this type of skull what we call we call the salt and pepper skull salt and pepper skull so here patients having hypercalcemia salt and pepper lesions so what is the condition so understand this hyperthyroid thyroid is having no relation a langer is langer and cystiocytosis can also have skull uh, changes uh, multiple sclerosis will not have multiple myeloma will have so understand this uh, you can see these uh, salt and pepper skull and uh, hypercalcemia these are feature of hyperparathyroidism so answer for this question will be a so remember sometimes they give you x-ray of uh, like i have seen from um, in many times they have asked the question on lytic bowl lesion so this time uh, this is in my expected list this time they can ask you this question right related to salt and pepper skull important okay this is like uh, about uh, side effects of oha so uh, again uh, trending topic uh, this is 100 percent chance very very important something which is uh, like from related to this uh, like oha side effect they will definitely ask an exam so see a type 2 diabetic patient started on treatment complaint of frequent micturition frequent urination fever and burning micturition so when you see this type of complaint it means a patient is now having uti or cystitis so either it could be a uti or it could be cystitis following drug is most likely responsible for these symptoms so just uh, i want to make a table here because they are asking this type of question so uh, here i am writing oha and side effect so again they will uh, not ask you a direct question they will just uh, try to twist the question in form of clinical case so what are the potential side effects you can see with oha so starting first with a big one night so big one night uh, we have drugs like metformin fenformin so big one night is basically a group so we have drugs like metformin and fenformin metformin fenformin their side effect will be lactic acidosis so for this reason even fenformin is withdrawn from market then uh, remember uh, a metformin is a drug which will not cause hypoglycemia so that's the good advantage but remember lactic acid is also rare most common side effect if you ask me that will be gi upset this is most common especially in person like when you start this drug then sometimes they will ask you like metformin and formin they can also cause b12 deficiency so these are the side effects which we you, you need to remember for metformin and uh, they are also like uh, uh, remember uh, you should uh, decrease the dose uh, when patient is having a low gfr coming to next one so next group will be uh, a sulfonylureas sulfonylureas so this is like again a class of drug which they ask in exam so if you ask me side effect of sulfonylurea is the most common side effect you can see like uh, uh, they are different from metformin like they can cause hypoglycemia and most of the sulfonylurea remember uh, they start with g like uh, nowadays we use second generation like glimipride gliburide glibenclamide glipizide one more thing i can say metformin uh, can cause weight loss and sulfonylureas can cause weight gain moving to uh, a third class uh, which uh, sorry, i'll say like this third and fourth class i'm writing together so it's the class like we have a uh, dpp4 inhibitor dpp4 inhibitor and uh, we have a class called uh, i can say glp1 analog or glp means glucagon like peptide so dpp4 inhibitor and uh, glp analog these are two drugs like uh, uh, where I can say, you know, all these drugs uh, are gliptins. And here uh, we have drugs like axinatide, sectionatide. So uh, there is a, a assumable side effect like uh, they have uh, caused, I can say, MTC, medullary thyroid carcinoma. So this is like reported in some animal studies and uh, they can cause, uh, I can say, these type of drug uh, can uh, lead to a damage to exocrine function of pancreas. So automatically they will cause pancreatitis. So these are the possible side effect of these two class of drugs. So I'm writing together third and fourth. Moving to uh, next class of drug, which I'm writing. This will be class number fifth. So here, uh, like we have drugs like a uh, group is called thiazolidine dione. Thiazolidine dione. So here we have drugs like uh, rosiglitazone, pioglitazone. So long term, they are supposed to cause bladder cancer. The some risk of bladder cancer. 
moving to next one uh, we have uh, like alpha glucosidase inhibitor alpha glucosidase inhibitor so here we have drugs like a carbos voglibos uh, miglitol so these uh, drugs uh, under time they can cause platulence they can cause osmotic diarrhea and uh, remember in ibd patient they are contraindicated so you should not use this in patient with uh, corn disease or ulcerative colitis and moving to the uh, last class in my list because these are the important class so we have sglt2 inhibitor so these drugs uh, like this is again a potential mcq here these drugs can cause uh, uti so that's why patient can develop burning micturition so these patients can cause a side effect called euglycemic ketoacidosis. In the last year, I told you this thing, this euglycemic ketoacidosis is an expected question. Unfortunately, it could not uh, came in your exam. But remember, recent UPSC exam, this exact question came. So euglycemic ketoacidosis, you will see with this drug. Then uh, sometime uh, it can cause pathological fracture. And uh, it can also cause four years gangrene on long term use. So basically like uh, this is like a game changer drug we have many advantage of this like we have drugs like anagliflozin, ampagliflozin, dapagliflozin and this is the future of uh, diabetes in India very very important drug. So again now you can see like patients having UTI so uh, if you see the drug will be dapagliflozin just remember one more thing they can ask you these drugs are now approved to uh, uh, prevent heart failure even in non-diabetic patients so this could be again a potential MCQ. Metformin lactic acidosis beta deficiency exenatide sexenatide so these are basically your uh, i can say glp analog glipizide will be sulfonylureas so, so again so answer this question will be dapagliflozin moving to next one let's let's see this question rta victim means road traffic accident victim is brought with breathing difficulties so maybe patient met some accident now let's see following is noted Following JVP finding is most likely. So what uh, it is given? BP is 80 by 57. Do you think it's a normal BP? No. So how we label this? We label this as hypotension. So till now there is no hint in the question. Now you can see pulse is feeble. Pulse is feeble means there is a weak pulse because patient BP is less. When BP is less, you cannot uh, properly feel the pulse. So it's a weak pulse. JVP is elevated. JVP is elevated, so you can see like engorged neck veins, JVP is elevated, heart sounds are muffled. When you write the word muffled, like but remember nowadays examiners are smart, they don't write the word muffled means diminished. So muffled heart sound, muffled heart sound, raised JVP and hypotension. So I know now uh, things are uh, hitting your brain. This is a triad. What triad we call? We call this as big triad. And big triad is seen where? Big triad is seen in a patient with cardiac tamponade. In cardiac tamponade, uh, remember a mnemonic which I am writing in front of you in big letters. So that mnemonic is pay tax. Pay tax, which means pericarditis will have a prominent Y descent. Tamponade will have a prominent X descent. So tamponade will have X descent. Now let us see the option. Absent X and Y descent, no. Prominent X and Y both are prominent, no. Prominent X, you can see. Tamponade will have prominent X. Any one will be prominent. So you can see prominent X and absent Y. So answer will be prominent X. And remember, so just let me write this here. Cardiac tamponade will have a prominent X descent and constructive pericarditis constructive pericarditis will have a prominent Y descent one sumatriptan can be given in which of the following diagnosed with migraines so sumatriptan is actually DOC of migraine in acute attack and can you tell me what is the drug of choice in prophylaxis? Yes, come on. It is propanolol. 
So they are asking you uh, who can get out of this list? A 35 year old female presenting with positive UPT. UPT is urine pregnancy test. So actually saying uh, sumatriptan, these triptans, uh, these are contraindicated in pregnancy. So you cannot give this to pregnant patient. 47 year old male with history of cerebrovascular disease means stroke. Again, triptans are contraindicated in stroke patient because uh, uh, they increase the chances of stroke. A 52 year old male with history of coronary artery disease means patient is having angina or MI. So remember, triptans are contraindicated in coronary artery disease and cerebrovascular disease. So when I read the question, I have ruled out three options. So let us uh, even like, like I don't have to read the fourth option, but let me read this. A 42 year old female who has taken ergot alcoholate in the past one week. Now, now see, uh, most of the physician in India, when they want to treat migraine, they start with triptans. But still, like uh, I can say, uh, in some uh, villages, uh, due to cost issue, triptan like it cost. Uh, if you see, triptan cost on fifty rupees one tablet. That is a bit expensive. So fifty rupees a tablet in India, you cannot prescribe this tablet to all the people. Many people will not afford that tablet. So understand this thing. Ergot uh, alkaloids, these are cheaper alternative. So uh, suppose a person, a female, like uh, no other history is given, who have taken ergot, there is no benefit, then definitely we have to start triptan. There is no other option. Is it clear? So remember, they can ask you like triptans. Remember, they are contraindicated. In, I can say, a patient who is having cerebrovascular disease and coronary artery disease, and we should uh, try to avoid this as much as possible in pregnant patients. So we will also not give this to pregnant patient. Now coming to uh, next one, let us see. A patient present with left-sided facial paralysis and left-sided limb weakness for past one hour. What do you think now? Two things should come into your brain. So there's hemiplegia, one-sided unilateral hemiplegia. So either it could be TIA or it could be stroke. Her blood pressure is 160. So BP is in a, uh, I can say, normal range, uh, little elevated, but it is considered normal. CT appears to be normal. What should be the next step in management? So just try to understand this. Uh, uh, BP uh, control is done when it is more than 220. So BP is uh, almost 160, so there is no point of uh, reducing the BP further. So just try to understand this. Whenever you are having a stroke patient, so we have two types of stroke, that is ischemic stroke, and hemorrhagic stroke. So just try to understand this ischemic stroke. It is like here you have to use uh, thrombolytic drugs. So whenever you are introducing thrombolytic, for example, we are using LT place in so that we should use in uh, less than 4.5 hours. So this 4.5 hours is something we call this window period. And hemorrhagic stroke, understand if it is a small bleed, this will settle on its own. If it's a, a, a big bleed, suppose if it's a small bleed, so then we will do nothing. We will just observe the patient and do the symptomatic management. But if it's a big bleed, then uh, we have to refer the patient to neurosurgery unit and they, uh, what they will plan, they will plan for uh, bar hole surgery and sometime uh, like craniectomy. So that will be a case so in surgery department. Now understand this here. Uh, we have a, a stroke protocol as per the stroke protocol. Understand it could be TI, it could be stroke. Now, many of you are thinking like, sir, CT is normal, so it can be, it, it is TIA. But remember, TIA take time to uh, resolve. So, it take 24 hours. So, maybe your patients are patients having TIA, right? Uh, and uh, if you wait for a few hours and uh, let's see like, like a patient is resolving or not. But in that case, you are missing this timeline. This timeline is 4.5 hours. Is it clear? So just try to understand this. I'm making a stroke protocol in front of you, and this is very, very important. Suppose uh, a person is coming to you with stroke. A person is coming to you with stroke. So first test. Stroke means how you will uh, feel it's a stroke. So you uh, can see like either there will be speech impairment, or uh, so there will be speech problem. Means patient will have a sudden uh, mouth deviation. He cannot speak anything, or it could be hemiparesis. Straight away, the first test will be CT scan. So when you are doing, doing a CT scan, in CT scan, what we can see? We can see, uh, like, you know, like blood will look uh, uh, whitish. So that bleed, uh, even calcium will look white. So you can see either it could be a white 
it could be a more dark or black so understand this thing when you see white it means it's a bleed so when it's a bleed you understand like you have two options either observation or you need to send a patient to neurosurgery department for surgery but whenever it's a black here you need to introduce thrombolytic drugs am i right thrombolytic drugs when bleed what do we do if it's a small bleed observation symptomatic treatment or uh, we have two options second option if it's a big bleed so then we will refer the patient to neurosurgery they will do bar hole surgery or open uh, craniectomy now understand this thing sometime it happens even in practice many time it is seen like ct can be like uh, we call this isodens or normal ct can be normal so understand thrombolytic drugs whenever you are giving thrombolytic drugs you need to give this in less than 4.5 hours so window period is 4.5 hours if you miss this time so now our patient is already uh, like uh, one hour late so now we are left with 3.5 hours it may be tia but we can't take the risk if you are not if it is stroke because we don't know it is stroke or tia if it is tia it will resolve but if it is not tia then this will be irreversible damage patient will never reverse so remember as per stroke protocol what current guidelines says you do a ct scan if ct is normal even if, it is, if there is, we are ruling out hemorrhage once hemorrhage is ruled out do thrombolysis simple so thrombolysis only when you will not do whenever there is a bleed if it's a no bleed do thrombolysis because you have to match that time always remember in management of stroke time is money clear so this is again a good question that this so let us see the option now nothing since ct was normal no hemiplegia is there start on aspirin aspirin clopidogrel you will use but later on intravenous thrombolysis so again what we'll do we we'll start the thrombolysis advise bp control no so answer is c moving to next one following type of non hodgkin lymphoma and its corresponding grade are correctly matched correctly matched match they are asking no see small lymphocytic lymphoma is high grade follicular lymphoma is intermediate grade and diffuse large vessel lymphoma is low grade burkitt lymphoma is high grade so just try to understand this small lymphocytic lymphoma is a low grade tumor it's a low grade tumor then follicular lymphoma so just let me uh, uh, write here what i uh, want to tell you first so let me just write here we have non hodgkin lymphoma in non hodgkin lymphoma we have different types of tumor out of this remember diffuse large b cell lymphoma and burkitt lymphoma diffuse large b cell lymphoma and burkitt lymphoma these two tumor these two tumor are considered high grade and in fact remember uh, burkitt lymphoma uh, is a very high grade tumor and dlbc is actually a complication of other non hodgkin lymphoma so these two are always high grade tumor and even like uh, burkitt lymphoma is kind of one of the fastest growing human tumor and dlbc is a complication complication means follicular cell lymphoma uh even i can say marginal zone lymphoma mantle cell lymphoma they have maltoma hairy cell lymphoma these all will convert into dlbcl even some uh, leukemia like a cll can also convert into dlbcl so dlbcl is actually a complication so when they want to choose the correct statement so remember dlbcl is a low grade not incorrect burkitt lymphoma is high grade burkitt lymphoma is high grade so this is the uh, most correct option out of this so burkitt lymphoma diffuse large vessel lymphoma is low grade it's very high grade even it's it's the highest grade follicular cell lymphoma it is considered a, a low grade low to intermediate i can say small cell lymphoma is considered a low grade so correct match statement will be burkitt lymphoma is one of the highest grade human tumor other things they can ask you like translocation for burkitt lymphoma is translocation yes come on which one 814 and in burkitt lymphoma you will see tangible body macrophage uh, that pattern is what we call we call this starry sky appearance starry sky appearance moving to next one a 58 year old female with glomerular inflammation so first hint in the mcq is glomerular inflammation and krebs on auscultation so auscultation there is a krebs means patient is having some sort of uh, pulmonary edema that's why you can see crepitations with a lymphadenopathy 
muscular effusion following rash in the face. So this rash you can see. Now understand this thing. Many of, of you are thinking it is uh, like uh, SLE butterfly rash. But remember if you see this rash, this is more depressed. SLE rash uh, uh, will be like a more superficial. Now uh, you can see uh, SLE is more in young female. So if you see the pain, well, the question uh, like uh, you have to relate your pathology notes here. Out of the given option, lupus vulgaris is skin TB. So only this option B and C, these are the only example of granulomatous inflammation. SLE is not granulomatous. Scleroderma will not have this type of rash instead of this like scleroderma patient will have multiple uh, telangiectasia, microstomia, a shiny face and then you can see like sclerodactyly absence of these uh, folds in the back of finger. Now only these two are granulomatous inflammation in, uh, because TB, TB you will see uh, I can say caseating granuloma. In sarcoidosis, you will see non casting granuloma. Now, seeing the question, granulomatous inflammation, then you can see Krebs, lymphadenopathy, pleural effusion, all these things you can see in both the TB and sarcoidosis. Then, uh, why it is not TB? Because remember, skin TB will have only uh, generally only skin manifestation. It is extra pulmonary TB, right? And this classical rash, what we can see here, this classical rash which is shown here. In uh, a TB, you will not see this rash. A skin TB, what we see, we see uh, like apple jelly nodules. This classical rash, what is shown in this image, uh, is called lupus perneo. And lupus perneo is seen where in a patient of sarcoidosis. And sarcoidosis is diagnosis of exclusion, remember. So again, uh, sarcoidosis, although disease is very difficult to diagnose, but in uh, uh, patients are very rarely uh, diagnosed in practice, but in MCQs, it's a very common disease that they ask. Very, very important topic. Moving to the next one, following is not a reversible cause of dementia. Just uh, understand the theory which I am giving you here. Suppose any dementia which is due to some deficiency or uh, deficiency means that is reversible. So any deficiency or I can say correctable cause. So dementia due to some deficiency or a, a correctable cause that is reversible. But any dementia due to neurodegenerative disease because in our brain what we have, we have permanent cells. Once they are destroyed, they are destroyed. So in neurodegenerative disease, dementia is irreversible. So remember uh, example of neurodegenerative disease include Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson disease. Dementia with Levy body, Huntington disease. So these are neurodegenerative disease. So now let me read the question. Now see, vitamin B12 deficiency can it cause dementia? Yes. Vitamin B12 deficiency can also produce a complication called as CCD, subacute combined degeneration of spinal cord. So this is like deficiency, so it is reversible. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus. So uh, sometimes we use shunting procedure to treat this. So again, this is a treatable cause, correctable cause. This can be reversible. Hypothyroidism, when you start uh, levothyroxine or thyroidine or this is reversed. So, Levy body dementia or DLB, dementia with Levy body, this is neurodegenerative. It is irreversible. Very, very important. A person bought two bottles of a liquor, of liquor shop or of liquor from shop. Let me just uh, edit the question. And later present with uh, drowsiness, ataxia, blurry vision. So, understand this. So what they are telling you, they are telling you like person, if I want to uh, say this MCQ in, in Hindi like patient take a say two bottle daru ki laya, uske baad drowsy ho raha hai, ataxia ho raha hai, blurry vision hai. So sharaab ki bottle la raha hai, means alcohol la raha hai. So you can, they are asking you simple pharmacology question. It's basically a pharmacology question that they are asking is what is the uh, antidote for alcohol toxicity, right? He is developing alcohol toxicity. For alcohol toxicity what we use, we use fomipizole. Uh, so let us uh, see diazepam. Diazepam, uh, like remember uh, here I am telling you, diazepam is a drug. Diazepam, chlorodiazepoxal, diazepam, these are the drugs we use in alcohol de addiction. So, initially, when person uh, want to quit, uh, suppose he is chronically addicted to alcohol, his main problem will be when he is not getting alcohol, he cannot sleep. 
so that insomnia is developing to calm the patient first what you will give you will give diazepam so first test what we give we give diazepam or uh, like in practice we prefer chlorodiazepoxide because it is even longer acting if it is like LFT derange in that case we will prefer lorazepam and oxazepam so these are the drugs we use in addiction process naloxone uh, is a drug which is an antidote for opioid toxicity it is opioid antagonist but remember uh, naloxone will also have anti-craving action so there are certain drugs so just uh, let me write this first you will give diazepam so these drugs are used in de-addiction process initially because patient will have insomnia where he is not getting alcohol now understand naloxone naloxone then we have drugs like uh, ondansetron ondansetron topiramate topiramate is basically an antiepileptic drug a camproset a camproset so this is a mnemonic called nota so understand this uh, nota means naloxone these are the drugs which will have anti-craving effect in alcohol so although this i can say naloxone remember it's also an antidote uh, of opatoxity on a certain antimatic drug uh, topiramide is anti-epileptic drug a so these are the drugs which have uh, anti-craving action these are anti craving in case of alcohol addiction. Now, coming to uh, flumazenil, it is a drug that we use in benzodiazepine toxicity. So, it is the drug of choice for benzodiazepine toxicity. Even they can ask you like uh, drugs like Z drugs like uh, the Liplon, Zopiclon, Zolpidem. In that case, also we give same flumazenil. So, the answer for this question will be for me, Pizol. Moving to next one, loading dose of alteplase in 80 kg person. So, alteplase is thrombolytic drug. So, we assume like our patient is having stroke. So, in stroke case, what we use? We use a 0.9 mg. Now, you are telling sir, this type of question will not ask in FMG exam. They can ask. So, that's very, very important. Remember, now they are asking you dosing. So, 0.9 mg per kg is a dose that we use. So, 80 kg. So, 0.9 mg means if you see 80 kg per person so 0.9 into 80 how much it is 72 right now 72 is uh, not given the option it is not given the option to understand this uh, how we treat a patient uh, of systemic stroke so the dose is 0.9 mg per kg in this dose we give 10 percent as bolus so 10% we give as bolus and 90% we give as infusion over 1 hour. Over 1 hour. So 10% as bolus. So 72 means if you see like 10% uh, of this will be 7.2. That is close to 8 mg. Right. So exact dose is 0.9 mg suppose but like, uh, like this is the reference from Harrison. But if you see like in some uh, other medicine textbook, they write like this, 1 mg per kg. So when they ask you like 1 mg per kg, this will straight away become 80, right? So 10% uh, of 80 will be 8 mg. So this will be the loading dose means bolus dose. Am I clear? So this is like an important MCQ that they ask in exam. Moving to next one. Curb 65 score. So understand this. Curb 65 score and stand for, C stand for confusion. U, U stand for BUN, blood urea nitrogen, more than 7 millimole per liter. R stand for respiratory rate, which is more than 30 per minute. B stand for BP, BP means SBP, systolic blood pressure, that is less than 90, means patient is having hypotension. And 65 or more is age of the patient. So C for confusion is the score. Yes. Except question they are asking. Systolic BP less than 100? No. It should be less than 90. So this is the answer. Respirate more than 30? Yes. It is in the score. It's a part of score. 
बी यू एन मोर देन सेवन यस इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ स्कोर सो ब्लड प्रेशर शुड बी लेस देन नाइनटी इट्स क्लियर दिस इज लाइक अ वेरी डिसेंट एम सी क्यू देव दे गिवन ऑल द करेक्ट ऑप्शन ऑलमोस्ट करेक्ट बट रिमेंबर नाइनटी इज द लाइक लोअर लिमिट विच यू हैव टू रिमेंबर सो दिस दीज आर कंपोनेंट ऑफ कैप्सिस डिवाइस स्कोर एंड आई टोल्ड यू लाइक इन प्रीवियस क्वेश्चन वी यूज द स्कोर अलॉन्ग विद दिस वी हैव वन मोर स्कोर कॉल्ड पी एस आई इंडेक्स न्यूमोनिया सीवरिटी इंडेक्स तो पी एस आई इंडेक्स एंड कर्ब सिक्सटी फाइव स्कोर दीज टू स्कोर वी यूज टू एसेस द सीवियरिटी ऑफ न्यूमोनिया सो दीज टू स्कोर वी यूज टू एसेस द सीवियरिटी ऑफ न्यूमोनिया Moving to next one, most common type of lung cancer in light smokers. Light smoker uh, uh, who smoke uh, less, or we consider them light smoker or non-smoker. So in this case, remember, a uh, most common cancer will be adenocarcinoma. So just uh, let me write it here. Adenocarcinoma is more common in non-smoker or light smoker. or i can say females it is most common cancer in females a small cell carcinoma is a not a common one and most common cancer in male or in heavy smoker heavy smoker this will be squamous and in india and i can say adenocarcinoma is most common in usa Small cell carcinoma is having highest association with smoking, but it is not a common one. So remember, the answer will be large cell is very, very, very rare. It is diagnosis of exclusion. Small cell also called as short cell lung cancer. It will have even though a maximum paraneoplastic symptom, but it is not again a common. And squamous cell is more common in heavy smokers. So answer will be C. Moving to next one, an old woman like uh, this is something which I am seeing uh, from five year. Every alternate attempt of FMG exam, you will see this question. So uh, that's why I added this question. An old woman present with persistent productive cough and clubbing. Auscultation, wheeze, and crackles are present. So wheeze, ah, uh, when they are present, it means it is some sort of short sort sort of obstruction. Means it's a case of OPD, obstructive pulmonary disease. No history of fever. There is no fever. So what is the most specific investigation to confirm the diagnosis? Right. So just ah uh, try to understand this. There is persistent productive cough. So when I talk about obstructive pulmonary disease, so there are uh, four options. First option is bronchial asthma. Then what we have, we have uh, conditions like I can say chronic bronchitis. We have emphysema, and we have bronchiectasis. One more condition is bronchiolitis, which is uh, extremely rare. That is seen in children. So again, here you can see old woman. Now see, productive cough and clubbing. So when I see the word productive cough, you can see in all these four condition. In emphysema, you will see productive cough is unlikely because emphysema patient they will have more shortness of breath. Cough is uh, now settled. So emphysema is unlikely. Now see, bronchitis and emphysema both will not have clubbing. Asthma will not have clubbing. So only option what we left with bronchiectasis and investigation of choice will be HRCT. So they have asked this one-liner form sometimes as a clinical case. So remember, investigation of choice for bronchiectasis will be HRCT. This is again uh, like uh, last year NEET PG question, a fresh question came in exam. Following types of kidney stone are produced by laxative abuse. So like uh, some people they take a lot of Ayurvedic laxative and even like are. Uh, allopathic laxative can also cause this. So uric acid stone, remember, this is something which is having association with some drugs. Stuart stone, staghorn stone, or proteus stone. So this is due to proteus. Calcium oxalate is most common. So understand this. Laxative will produce ammonium urate stone. Very very important. Moving to next one. A one year old male child is having heart rate of forty. Pediatrics and overlap with medicine. Heart rate of forty, BP ninety sixty, potassium level six point five. What's next? I means uh, you can see like a normal level of potassium. Normal level of potassium will be three point five two five. So this is the normal value of potassium. Now you can see it's a clear cut case of because if you see see the option, 
so like a bp is 9060 that's uh, quite okay although heart rate is a bit lower side so you can see it's a case of hyperkalemia so hyperkalemia so it is like an impending cardiac arrest which can uh, happen to patient so here potassium value is given 6.5 so diagnosis will be hyperkalemia and once this value reach more than 7 like patient can have cardiac arrest so what we can use can we use uh, ipratropium ipratropium uh, we don't use we can use salbutamol to treat hyperkalemia salbutamol or beta agonist or albuterol uh, what they'll do they'll try to send potassium back into cells so ipratropium we don't use and salbutamol here uh, will have an added advantage this will uh, uh, increase uh, heart rate as well but that is not even the option do you think it's a shock case adrenaline we give in shock patient soda bicar we give to patient of acidosis there are no signs of acidosis so in hyperkalemia remember the drug of choice drug of choice will be calcium gluconate when calcium gluconate is not available alternative will be calcium chloride Remember, calcium carbonate is calcium tablet. Here, so we can use calcium gluconate, which is not given the option. So, ultimately, what we have to use calcium chloride. So, it's a case of hyperkalemia, and what we are using calcium chloride. Moving to the next one, a 30 year old man presents with sudden onset of headache. Young male, headache, palpitation, profuse sweating, PHD, palpitation, headache, and diaphoresis means sweating. He had several such episodes in the past. During these episodes, his BP is, is found to be high. And 24 hour urinary metanephrine is elevated. So, now you will tell me, sir, this is an easy question. Why have I added this? Because from here, they'll ask you many MCQs. So, diagnosis is clear. It's a case of pheochromocytoma. So, what I want to confirm here is pheochromocytoma, understand, it's a, a tumor of adult medulla. So, they ask you always a question on the diagnosis part of this topic pheochromocytoma so pheochromocytoma term you will use uh, whenever it's a tumor in the medulla whenever the tumor is in the medulla it's a tumor of chromaffin cells so sometimes we use the term chromaffinoma but if it is located outside the adrenal gland we use the term paraganglioma we use the term paraganglioma whenever it is extra adrenal So, in adrenal medulla, we call this pheochromocytoma. Now, understand, suppose uh, uh, whatsoever it is, is it a pheochromocytoma, paraglioma, first test that you will use, this will be a 24 hour urinary metanephrine. So, urinary metanephrine level. So, this is the test that we do for screening. So don't make a mistake here because uh, I am telling you this thing, this is very, very important MCQ. First test, screening test, 24 hour metanephrine. To confirm, to confirm what you will do, we will do plasma metanephrine. To confirm, you will do plasma metanephrine. So this is the, I can say, investigation of choice. Confirmation or confirmatory test. So here, like you can see, urinary metanephrine is elevated. But uh, I want to go in more detail. Suppose when you want to localize the tumor, when you want to localize the tumor, so you have to go for a CT abdomen. But uh, sometimes uh, it is not a CT abdomen. So we need to do an MRI scan, MRI abdomen. This question uh, asked already like what is a radiological investigation? So remember, radiological investigation of choice will be MRI scan. Is it clear? So, radiological investigation will be MRI scan. Now, fourth, understand this, remember, if tumor is very small, if it is like, uh, I can say, when size, if size is less than 1.5 centimeter, so sometime it is not detected in, uh, I can say, MRI scan, then we have to do a Dota Tate scan. This is the expected MCQ, Dota Tate scan. Right. Alternative to Dota test scan, which is uh, like again, it can be as an exam, but uh, that is not a test we routinely do in practice. But uh, this is uh, people's favorite that is MIBG scan. So, understand this thing if tumor size is small, we can go for Dota Tate scan or MIBG scan. 
So preferred is data data scan, but uh, sometimes question they out is some outdated topics. So this MIBG scan or data data scan, this could be uh, asked an exam. I think many of the time they have asked about MIBG scan. So uh, I can say possible MCQ here is data data scan. Is it clear? So let's see once again. First test, urinary meta-nephrins, confirmatory plasma meta-nephrins. Radiological investigation of choice or uh, investigation of choice to localize the tumor, MRI. If tumor is very small, if it is very small or located outside the uh, abdomen, so in that case, what we do? In that case, we'll do rotator head scan, right? What else we can do? MIBG. MIBG is meta ido benzo scan. Moving to our last question, following is likely to be seen in a patient diagnosed with acute MI. So understand, in normal healthy people, LDH2 values are more than LDH1. In MI, you will see LDH1 value more than LDH2. Right? So generally, uh, uh, when I uh, see this ratio, this ratio means, means 1 is to 2 ratio. In MI, let me write about MI only, LDH1 is to LDH2 ratio. So LDH1 is more. So, so actually the exact is more than 0.9. But we consider this as 1. But it is actually 0.9. But 0.9 is not given, so I am omitting it out. I am just actual value is 0.9. So let me write it one. So let us see the option first. One option I am removing because four is not at all a part. Right? So what you will see in a patient with MI? LDH1 is to LDH2 ratio less than one. LDH value is more now, so it cannot be less than one. LDH1 is to LDH2 ratio more than one. It's the correct answer. LDH2 is to 1 ratio more than 1. So that is actually normal. So this is like normal people and this is a case of MI. Right? What about option 1? LDH1 is to LDH2 less than 1. They are confusing you in increased degree. Again, it's normal. Right? This will be normal. So remember, just one line remember, you have to remember in MI, LDH2 in MI, LDH1 is more than LDH2, we call this as flipping of LDH. For this, we use a term, that term is flipping of LDH. And if you see the ratio, the ratio value will be more than 0.1 or exact value is 0.9. So I hope we have discussed these topics which are uh, like important. Basically, the point was uh, you should be aware of the topics which are frequently tested. So we have discussed stroke. We have discussed anemia, we have discussed the topic of lymphoma, we have discussed uh, MI, then uh, we have discussed uh, some other MCQs which are important for your chromocytoma. So these are the important topics which you need to uh, see once uh, before exam. Thank you so much. Remember, be confident. You only need 50% and you are the future of this country. So you can do it. Wish you all the best. Bye-bye.